What's going on guys? Welcome to the channel. My name is Nathan. Uh, today we're going to do a quick review on the Pioneer AVH-Z9200 DAB. Uh, we retrofit that unit into a Toyota uh, Kluger yesterday and I was really, really impressed with the features, the way it works, how fast it is, just all around. Um, you know, Kenwood took the spot for most selling units, I think, very recently, and Pioneer have sort of just come and released this unit and said, <laughs> we're going to take that spot back. So uh, let's jump into it. All right, guys, so let's start with what you get in the box. Uh, one of the first things we'll look at is this little sleeve here. Uh, basically, the unit actually has a detachable face. And so you can detach the face, put it in the sleeve, and pop that away in the glove box. It's a pretty old school thing, but Pioneer is still doing it, so whatever. Here we have the power harness. Uh, pretty cool that it has the ISO plugs on the back, so if you buy the steering wheel control module for one end, you can literally just plug that in without having to buy the Pioneer side as well, which is pretty good. And as always, this light green wire, I tell you guys, we want to connect that it says parking brake. We just want to directly connect that to ground, which is our black wire. And this will allow you to use CarPlay, watch movies, all that sort of stuff with, with the car in uh, motion. Okay, next up we have the GPS antenna. So the unit does not have onboard navigation, but it does have an external GPS antenna. This is fantastic. Uh, a lot of Kenwood, a lot of Alpine units do this and it's good to see Pioneer doing it as well now. What this does is we want to mount this nice and high behind the dash, behind the radio. Use this metal base plate that they supply and then obviously plug that in and neaten up the wiring. And when you're using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you're not relying on just your phone for GPS reception. You're actually getting an external GPS um, which is going to really, really help boost that reception. All right, next up we have two USB cables, rear-mounted USB cables. Uh, so we plug them in the back of the unit, run them over to the glove box, and one is for Android Auto and one is for Apple CarPlay. And we know that because in the box you also get this. So port one, CarPlay, port two, Android Auto. Cool. Digital radio antenna comes with the unit. All the units are doing this now when DAB was very new. Uh, sometimes it was ex you had to buy this separately. They all supply it now, and Kenwood, uh, sorry, Pioneer do have a very nice looking dab antenna. External microphone. All the units do this. Very good. Um, definitely, if the only thing we can compare it to really is units that have the microphone built in or no external, and they sound terrible. So always want something with external. And last but not least. We have inputs and outputs all on one plug. So front output to for front speakers to an amplifier, subwoofer, output to the amplifier, rear speakers to the amplifier, AUX input, so you can go ahead, plug in your AUX cable, run that in the car, really no one needs it, no one uses it. They don't even supply the cable because that's becoming obsolete now. Reverse camera input, so that's perfect audio input so what this would be is if you've got a genuine AUX point in the car and you buy a, a harness that lets you retain that it will have the RCAs that connect into there. Video input pretty cool so if you have something with a video output you can obviously watch it from the screen on the video input maybe rear monitor screens or something like that and rear monitor output so same thing if you've got monitors you can that have an input you can relay what's on the screen to your monitor um, and the rear end of the car okay guys so we do have the standard double din size which does have the universal mounting screw holes in the side of the unit so um, yeah pre pretty straightforward it is a fairly large unit and there are some cars that it won't work in but you will you know whoever is doing the job for you will be able to confirm back of the unit we have corresponding plugs for all of the things that we went through before. So our GPS antenna, our two USBs, our power, microphone input. We also have an audio output, which is pretty cool, which is, uh, works by, via 3.5 millimeter jack. Steering wheel remote input for steering wheel controls. That was the corresponding plug for uh, the, the inputs and outputs that we went through. And 
uh, did I say that? DAB, that's a DAB antenna, universal AM FM antenna, and this will be for TV tuner, which doesn't work in Australia, but in other parts of the world, you may be able to buy a separate TV tuner module, plug it in, wire it up, and you will also have TV. Uh, we'll boot this unit up and go through everything, see how it all looks. We do have a resistive touch panel display. So as I've said in other videos, really not a big fan of it, but they have packed so many features into this unit and the screen doesn't actually feel that bad that it doesn't even matter. All right guys, so first up we get the Pioneer splash screen. We get a warning screen, which is pretty standard for all units. And then the unit boots up into the off screen. Uh, so as we can see here, auto connect Bluetooth has failed. Uh, someone's already tried to pair to this unit. All right, so let's press our home button. Okay, this brings us into the home screen. So this is Pioneer's new user interface. It does look very similar to the old one, but it is a lot nicer. Okay, so in here, this AV button will expand the menu. And then what is in this highlighted section are basically the, the widgets that you want to see when you first look into the home screen. So for instance, we can get rid of, um, let's uh, press and hold. So let's take disk away and replace that with AUX. So you can do that sort of stuff. All right, so let's look at some of the features that we have here. We have a power off button. So this will just put the unit, huh. sorry. This will just put the unit back into switch off mode, like so. And we can just press this to get it back up. Okay, source off will bring us into that home screen where it's just off. So this was nothing playing. All right, camera view. So when there is a camera plugged in, you will be able to, to press that. And you can, if your camera is connected to ignition power, you'll be able to look at that while you're driving or at any given time that you prefer. Rear. All right, so we've got the AV, USB, mirroring. So I think this is saying what you want to be going through the rear um, video. All right, whether it's AV, what you're playing on your SD USB, whether you're playing a CD DVD, or whether you're mirroring your device. You want that to sort of output to that rear output uh, RCA that we looked at. <clears throat> All right, AV input, which we looked at at the back. USB one and two, which obviously everything that's uh, not highlighted is showing us that there's nothing connected and the unit knows that. Okay, SD card. So if we press eject and open, we have an SD card input, okay? Auto equalizer microphone. So this is something that Pioneer supplies and this will auto equalize your sound settings, which is pretty cool. And also your CD, DVD slides here as well. Let's press that eject button again to close it. Okay, Wi-Fi audio, pretty cool. So this is a new thing that they've introduced. So when you've connected your phone, through Wi-Fi for mirroring. You can also use audio. Uh, this is gonna give you better data transfer, which in turn, uh, better sound quality from your music. Disc, so as we saw before, you can eject and go ahead and put in a CD or DVD. Digital radio, uh, antenna's not plugged in, so it's not gonna catch much. Basically, when you press it, it tries to find a list. Okay, when it finds a list, you can go here, uh, station, and there'll be a whole list of stations for you to go through and go ahead and um, pick a station that you like, okay? Dab. HDMI, um, I made a mistake at the back of the unit, so there is a HDMI plug, which I'll uh, add a little thing to show you um, via text on there just to point, pinpoint exactly where it is. HDMI input, now mirroring and HDMI, good that they're next to each other. You can mirror Android phones. Apple won't allow it, so you cannot mirror an Apple device. And basically what mirroring is, is once you've connected the device, we can go ahead and open the device. And when you're in mirroring, whatever you have on your device is mirrored to the unit. 
which means YouTube. All right, so you can go landscape when you've watched something and you get YouTube compatibility as well as Netflix. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, now coming back to HDMI, what I would do as I'm an Apple user is buy a HDMI cable, plug it into the back, run it into the glove box, then go to Apple, buy the HDMI to lightning connector, plug it in, plug it in, and boom, mirroring will be activated through HDMI. Okay, it's pretty cool. Bluetooth audio, as we all know, we just pair our phone to Bluetooth, and then Bluetooth audio will work with Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube, anything that you're playing through, Bluetooth will come through Bluetooth audio. Um, and AVH92, so right there we can just go ahead, tap on that, and pair very quickly and easily. iPod USB 1, um, which will be CarPlay for memory. We can go ahead and plug in our phone and look at CarPlay. AUX input and radio. So the text is a little bit different. You know, we can see that they've changed a couple of things. If you look at some of the older units, the text is very, very slightly different. Um, so this, this is better. This is telling us we don't have anything connected. Right, so to run device from the device, please select. Let's just go ahead and try this. Yeah. Okay, so Wi Fi definitely doesn't work through iPhone. So the mirroring was the last thing that we were on. We can just go ahead and click radio, that will bring us to radio. Okay, volume up and down as we went through before. Mute right here. So let's go radio we press that yeah we need a phone connected for this but I will connect and show you press and hold this button will power the unit down all right so this is gonna show this is like a quick settings so if we go to Bluetooth and we press that let's see we can press play Bluetooth um, quick settings tab bring us straight to the settings menu brightness high and low as we can see here a back button voice control which will work via Bluetooth or Apple CarPlay and eject which we went through um, let's just look at something so right here on the bottom of the screen let me just make sure you can see that yeah so sort of right here where my finger is there's a little button so if we press that you can go ahead and take the screen off. Pretty cool. Um, is there a need for it? No, but it is pretty cool. And we can just go ahead and click that back on very easily so it slides up and in. Unit will reboot. And we'll go through the settings, okay? So here we have quick settings, so Bluetooth, list settings and equalizer, which won't work. So everything's off right now, as you can see, because the unit doesn't think that there's audio output. So if we go to radio, it's now going to think that there is audio output and that equalizer, if you just saw there, was illuminated. Settings, so we have AV source, smartphone settings, smartphone setup, driving position, we drive on the right-hand side here, cool. Android Auto launch system is on. Auto mix, um, that's rubbish, don't even worry about it. No, it's sort of play music and auto mix your music to what you're playing so not many people really like that so you can AUX input you can turn it on AV input you can change the source Wi-Fi settings for um, Wi-Fi audio as well as okay guys moving forward we have camera settings so that backup camera as we looked at camera view you can go ahead and turn that on it will illuminate at the front second camera input which we looked at reverse gear setting keep that on battery park assistance guide so you can turn that on and that will give you the guidelines and then you can go ahead and actually set them up perfectly for your own uh, car So we have safe mode on and off. Um, I'll probably leave that off. Safe mode's probably gonna be, limit some of the features of the unit. Demo, always off. Climate reverse. Refer to the manual for that, because I've never seen that in my life. I can look that up. Touch panel calibration, so if you ever do find that 
you're touching things and they're not quite right, just go ahead and calibrate the screen. Next up we have theme settings, splash screen, awesome. So and then basically in splash screen, you can pick the different Pioneer boot screens. That, so that's the first screen you see, or you can go ahead and pick your own. So you would have to go and load a USB up with some pictures and off you go. Um, if you've got a, a Lotus, you can put a Lotus logo on, okay? Clock, so this will be the different clocks that you can pick and choose. Theme of the unit, so the color scheme, right, you can change that, I like this one here. Background, so you can change that background wallpaper. And illumination, you can change the colors, so down here. Okay. Sound settings, graphic equalizer, I usually will go to flat. Fader and balance, obviously left, right, rear, rear mute level so when you press and hold this button you will get mute and you can change that level to attention which is very low or you can just turn the music all the way completely off or muted subwoofer you can turn that on or off through the rca speaker level so you can turn the gain up on each speaker crossover settings we always like to set so front we turn on slope about six and then uh, how do we do the other one? There we go. Nope. No, that's not right. Front. There we go. That's rear. Let's go to front. Uh, there we go. So 100 hertz. Start at. Oh man, I'm really not a fan of these. That's the slope. Oh, that's the rear. How do you change the hertz? There we go. And that's how you do your hertz. So 63, 100. Um, start at about 63. Play with that. Slope lower. 18, more like 6. Start with that. Have a play. That's the rear. Do the front as well. Um, and get your, get your crossover set. Basically, this is going to allow you to go a lot louder on the sound and without the bass sort of jumping in and annoying the speakers. Sub settings won't work until it's um, all connected. Listening position, so if you're sitting in the front right, you can press that and it will auto-tune to sort of get that sound perfect for here. Time alignment, so you can play with time alignment. Uh, we'll do a video on how to do this exactly, but if you're into audio, you'll know exactly how to do all this and you can sort of set that up for yourself. All right, you can save your settings, load old settings, turn your bass boost on, rear speaker input, uh, output on. So for the amp, loudness, leave that off. Automatic level, leave that off. And sound retriever, leave that off. DVD setup, video settings, and Bluetooth settings. Um, that's about it for it all, guys. So let's jump into what you're all probably going to mainly use and that is apple carplay all right guys so basically here we have the new apple carplay so it shows you a few things on this screen which is the map it shows you exactly where you are what you were listening to recently and home so if you hit that it will guide you directly home if we scroll over we see the new apple carplay okay so in here we have phone favorites recents okay so all of this sort of stuff um, ask Siri to make a call so they have changed the interface it does look different and just another thing to notice how smooth that mode is there as well keypad so you can go ahead and just type in numbers make a call and you can go through your voicemail as well music if you use the music app basically this is what it will come up I don't use music app but this is how it looks now anyway maps so you can either go home you can search a place okay so you can go ahead and ask siri or you can type in a destination or you can find local uh, close by petrol parking restaurants etc messages app so it's going to go through these are your messages um, and you can go ahead and compose a message it's all speech there's no typing in messages all right, now playing will bring you to what you were playing recently, which for me was podcasts. AV will bring you back to Pioneer. We also have the calendar up today. So we've got no events today, but basically 
jump into calendar and it will show you any events that you have logged in for that day. We have the settings now, so do not disturb while driving. Activate with CarPlay, if you press that and you're driving, you someone sends you a message, they're gonna get it. do not disturb me while I'm driving text message back automatically. Appearance, so you can automatic or dark, I like the dark setting. And series suggestions on the dashboard, of course we want that. iHeartRadio, Audible Ways, WhatsApp and Spotify will all be the same because they're pretty much third party apps. So recently playing Daily Mix and your library as well. All right, guys. So basically, that was Spotify. WhatsApp works the same as Messages or. Um, Would you like? Nope. Would you like to hear and read me? I'll need to access your WhatsApp data. Who do you want to send it to? See, just like that. Uh, it's not going to listen because we don't have the microphone plugged in. Whoop! That home button will bring you home. You need to make sure you press this home button. Okay, so we went through this stuff. Um, calendar messages, maps, podcasts, all that. And then this is our little quick home screen, which is the next page that will play whatever you're listening to last. And we went through how all that works. And that is about it for the unit, guys. So like I said, this thing is packed with features. Like absolutely packed with features. And it seems like a fantastic unit so far. Now, as we can see, the user interface is really good. Everything's fast, everything's smooth. Um, yeah, really, really impressed with this unit. We actually fit it yesterday for a Toyota. Um, and I was like, we need to do a review on this unit because it is awesome. Cool. All right. And that is the review for the Pioneer AVH-Z 9200DAB. Like I said, guys, packed with features. Fantastic unit. Uh, I really like it. Um, you can look at some of our other head unit reviews and go ahead and just see what you like the best. Obviously, go with what you think is the best. Um, but if you do have any questions, drop a comment below. We do reply to every comment, so yeah, happy to help. Um, subscribe to the channel, it really helps us out. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching.